With three phase power, each phase is separated by 120 electrical degrees. Each pair of stator windings is connected to one phase. As current flows through each pair of windings, electromagnets are formed and a magnetic field is created. As voltage and current in the first phase increases, a magnetic north pole starts to form on A1 and the opposite south pole starts to form on A2. As the current peaks, these magnetic poles are at their strongest. As the voltage and current starts to fall, the strength of these poles decreases until they disappear altogether. At this point, there is no voltage in the phase, but the voltage is about to reverse polarity. As the polarity of the voltage reverses, the current increases in the opposite direction to before. Again, a magnetic field is formed on the poles, but this time in the reverse direction. A north pole forms on A2 and a south pole forms on A1. Once again, at maximum voltage, we have maximum current and the strength of these poles is at their greatest. Then again, the voltage and current start to decrease before reversing polarity and the cycle begins again. If we add a second phase, we can see that magnetic poles form on B1 and B2 in the same way as they form on A1 and A2. But, because of the 120 degree phase shift, these magnetic poles form slightly after those forming on A1 and A2. Have a look at how the North Pole on B1 forms just after the North Pole forms on A1 and how this corresponds to the graphs. If we add the third phase, we again see magnetic poles forming. Because of the 120 degree phase shift between phase 3 and phase 2, these poles form just after those that form on B1 and B2. The overall effect is a rotating magnetic field around the stator. The speed of this rotation is the same as the period of supply. In other words, a 50 Hz supply will cause the field to rotate 50 times per second. Because the field is always changing relative to the rotor, it induces current in the rotor bars. The direction of this current can be determined using the right-hand rule. But we also know that this induced current in the rotor will create a rotor magnetic field. The rotor also becomes an electromagnet. Therefore, the rotor electromagnet will try and line up with the stator field. But as the stator field is always rotating, the rotor ends up chasing it round and round. This induced magnetic field on the rotor follows the rotating magnetic field of the stator and the rotor turns. The interaction of the stator and rotor magnetic fields is what produces the motor's force or torque.